Hello again, Magnus Holmberg behind the microphone and today I'm going to talk about feeding the good guys and dolls and what could that mean. Very simply, a ration in sewage treatment. Now on the left hand side picture you see an aeration basin and all the water with the brownish stuff, that's the good guys and dolls you're seeing in the water. Right hand side you had a, have an emptied uh, ration basin where you see some aerators, but more about that in a very very few seconds. Just a short introduction to where you can find a ration in a wastewater treatment plant or a WWTP. First of all, you can find it in the pretreatment grid chamber slash sand trap. On the picture here you see a grid chamber and you see the main uh, airline and uh, drop legs going down to the ration system. But today we're gonna focus on biological treatment and the aeration tanks. On the picture here you see a typical aeration basin with a big main pipe at the end of the tank here going down to the raters. And on top you see some uh, sludge and you can see how the pattern of aeration is visible on the surface of the uh, aeration basin. Now let's get on with it. First thing how do we get the oxygen to the bacteria so they can eat the mm -hmm, shit or what we say in the business BOD? Well, it's very important that you have an easy access to the oxygen in the air. Basically how the oxygen gas is getting from the air bubble into the water phase where you have the bacteria so they can use the oxygen to chow down on all the BOD they can find in the, in the basin. Oxygen to all bacteria, basically good mixing in the basin. Time of the air bubbles in the basin. It's very important that when the oxygen goes from the air bubbles into the water, the time it can stay in the water or from the bottom of the tank to the surface where the air bubble will go up in the air again. That time is very important. Now on this slide I try to show you what I mean to easy access to the oxygen for the bacteria. You see three bubbles. A bubble which has a diameter of a thousand millimeters a meter which is basically a bath ball. In that bubble you have about six square meters per cubic meters of bubble of surface. In the coarse bubble in the middle you have a diameter of 10 millimeters. There you have 600 square meters per cubic meter bubble for the oxygen to leave the air bubble. Now when you come down to what we call a fine bubble where the diameter is about one millimeter you have 6,000 square meters per cubic meter bubbles. So 6,000 square meters of surface from which the oxygen, which is trapped in the air bubbles, can get into the water and to the bacteria. So the finer the bubble, the more surface for the oxygen to leave the air bubbles. And this is very important. And now what happens? Well, the oxygen goes out and I've showed you the pictures here, little schematic. But below, right hand side, you have the raters and you see the air bubbles, which contains the oxygen going upwards. And also the drawing is different bacteria, the good guys and dolls that will eat the BOD and help us remove all the things we don't want. And the top right corner, you see the top of an aeration tank where you can see all the brownish things are all the little bacteria, guys and dolls that are now eating on what we want to remove from the water. So now let's look at the mixing in the basin. So you have all the bacteria, all the sludge as we say, that needs to be mixed so that the bacteria get in good contact with all the air bubbles that are giving away the oxygen to them. Now on the picture here, the schematic ones, you have the aeration system in the bottom and that are showing how the air goes around and then mixing the sludge in the tank so you have a very good mixing. When you talk about the ration, one of the things you need to think about when you make a design is that the minimum airflow could be what we call a mixing criteria. Because you always have to keep a good mix in the tank to get the oxygen and over to the bacteria. Now, that airflow for the mixing 
could actually be more than the bacteria need for oxygen. So that means that the oxygen demand in the process is lower than the airflow for the mixing criteria. So what affect the time of the bubbles in the basins? Basically, the longer the time the bubble stays in the basin, the better oxygen transfer you will get. Now, first, the deeper basins will give a longer retention time and better oxygen transfer. Deeper basins means a higher working pressure for the blowers. This you also have to keep in mind. Furthermore, construction costs for deeper tanks will increase. One of the deepest aeration tank is in Henrik Stahls in Sweden, and that is about 12 meters deep. So going to those depths, again, the cost will, of course, go up. So in the end, you need a balance between benefits and costs of the deeper tank, the better, better oxygen transfer. Before I end, I'll just show you two pictures. One at the left-hand side, which is a drawing, where you can see what is called a drop leg. That is the pipe coming down from the air main. Goes down to the manifold of the aeration system. And from the manifold, you have headers connected with the aerators. And also, you can see that the headers have support that ties them to the bottom. And also, you have some interesting thing called a perch. And especially during summertime, when you have warm temperatures and the moisture in the air is very high, when you then get the air from the blowers down to the ration system, the water in the air will, of course, condensate, or the moisture in the air will condensate in the ration system. And it's very important that you purge that, because otherwise it's possible to fill up the ration system with, with water, basically. Here you have on the right hand side, I also show the perch line. Also, short mention, I used to work with flight and asylum, and so I work with sanitaire, and these are pictures that I've, I've used from, from, uh, from sanitaire. So, before I end, I will just show you two pictures from Gotland. This is from Fauré, and this picture here with a, with a grey tree is from Furilden uh, on the east coast of Gotland. With that, I'll just say, Thank you and remember, water really rocks.